Sijun, yes. great to have you here. Great Thank to be you. here. Uh, we're looking forward to this. It's going to be awesome. Oh, yes. <laughs> we're going to, I mean, from the words of the devs themselves, you're going to be able to talk us through what we're seeing and uh, we'll hopefully get this game going very soon. Yes. Obviously, uh, Doubt and Tato, two great players. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, and new civilization as well. So for a lot of people, it will be the first time that they actually get to see what they're about. So, yes. Yeah, and also curious to see how the, the pro players handle them. Yeah, uh, I mean, I can't wait. Obviously, putting these new civs in the hands of the experts. And as far as I know, they have played a little bit of the beta as well. So they are familiar with the civs. They know what is oh, yeah. you know, <laughs> in store for them. And uh, we'll talk through those new civs as well. I believe it is the uh, Bulgarians and the Tartars, which yes. we will see today. Uh, yeah, we have those two new civs. Uh, we're playing on Acropolis, so that's one of the familiar maps. Uh, I definitely think one of the saves has a straight advantage in this map, but okay. uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Well, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, I did t tell the players uh, not to, to, you know, just kill each other in two minutes flat. That would that wouldn't be the show nah. match we want. So, <laughs> you know, we will see how it goes. Um, so, obviously, being involved in DE, tell me a bit about sort of, you know, where it all started and and how the process has been f for you guys. Obviously, it's been a long time in the making. It's been a ridiculously big project. That's that's <laughs> that's the first thing. When we started working on this, uh, we were talking to each other, like uh, with with Microsoft and all the developers, like, "Hey, this is actually not just Age Vampires. It's Age Vampires, The Conquerors, yep. Rise of the Righteous, African Kingdoms, The Forgotten, and then the last Khan, the new ones. It's actually six games that we're remaking yeah. in one package. It, it's <laughs> huge, right? It is huge. I mean, there were a lot of questions about whether or not, you know, w will they include the expansions in DE? And then when it came out, like, oh, yeah, we're doing everything. Like, yeah. It's just awesome. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I believe if you already own HD, you get the, uh, the discount on DE as well. You do. You do get 25% uh, off. Okay. So, yeah. Awesome. Great deal. All right. Well, we're going to see it in action very soon. Players are just about to get ready, and uh, we'll jump straight in. Obviously, uh, we can talk a l at great length about this. We've got a small amount of time today. Yeah. I hope at the end of the stream we'll be able to do another one, and uh, we'll be able to answer questions from the Twitch chat as well. If things go like yesterday, I doubt we do have <laughs> time, but let's see. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see how it goes. Obviously, um, I'm just going to check right now. I think I have to refresh the, the game list in game, and there it is. All right. We're going to be jumping into the game in just a second here. It is loading up. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the, the spectator feature and all that. But we are in game and uh, we have Tato here spawning over to the west of the map in the blue. Down to the south in the red it will be the one and only Doubt. Uh, Doubt playing as the Tartars and Tato up to that north uh, west position playing as the Bulgarians. Talk to us Bert, a little bit about these sibs. Very briefly give us an indication of what they're about. Starting here of course with the Bulgarians. Okay, so um, Bulgarians are, are really an infantry civ and cavalry civ. It's, it's really a team amongst all the new civilizations in the last count. They're really focused on cavalry. Heavy cavalry or light cavalry, doesn't matter, but it's cavalry all over the place. Uh, because we actually noticed that people kind of started to miss that. In Rise of the Rajas, it was all about elephants and infantry. Mm -hmm. And people were like, hey, we want more paladin civs. It's been a few expansions ago since yeah. we had a paladin civ. So yeah, a lot of paladin civs in this one. Um, I think the, the biggest bonus for the Bulgarians, for example, uh, is that they have uh, free militia upgrades. Okay. So that's, that's a big one. Um, it's not something that I think we will really see in action in this game. Uh, because, yeah, it's a very open map. It's not really made for infantry, but you've got that one. Um, but then if we look at the other one, the Tatars, um, they are all about light cavalry. So, uh, okay, so we've got ideal. heavy cavalry here for the uh, Bulgarians, then sort of like the light cav from the, the Tatars. Yeah, so I, if, if you have to say like two units per civilization, I would say the Tatars are cavalry archers and light cavalry, mm -hmm. and then the Bulgarians are definitely heavy cavalry and infantry. Okay, cool. So uh, you think then in this game, perhaps the uh, the Tatars, a bit more rush civ, you know, light cav. Yeah, it's so common on this map, Acropolis, oh, yes. uh, to see lots of light cav raiding, especially since it's so open here and players have to build their lumber camps down at the bottom of the, the Acropolis and, you know, it leaves it quite exposed for them. Yeah, the, bi the big advantage that Tatars definitely have is the, one of their bonuses is that they uh, do 25% uh, percent more damage uh, from uphill when fighting from uphill. Oh, okay. We're, we're on Acropolis. You fight always on a hill. So. Pretty much. <laughs> There's pretty big hills on this map. <laughs> yeah, that's actually pretty huge, right? I mean, it, it must be interesting for you as developers. I mean, when you come to approach making four new civs. Yes. I mean, there's so many civs in the game right now. Obviously... 
how do you even start to think about, okay, well, what kind of sieve bonuses can we introduce? What can we you know, do that's different to the other 31 sieves that are already in the game? Yes, that is always a, <laughs> a very big challenge. Uh, like, what, what can we still do, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think uh, for this set of new civilizations, we definitely uh, yeah, got, a, got a nice package going. Awesome. Um, yeah, so I mean, at the moment, we're just seeing the standard stuff, players luring their balls at the moment here, and uh, we can kind of zoom in quite far with this as well. And obviously, we have the new spectator features. So obviously, uh, a lot of people are going to be amazed by the graphics, uh, 4K graphics for, for you know, it, those with lucky enough to have a 4K monitor can really yes. enjoy that. <laughs> uh, obviously, here, uh, we're playing on the, the regular monitors, but, you know, you can really see those, those graphical like uh, improvements. I think that's really great for the game. It's obviously mm -hmm. going to appeal a lot to uh, you know a newer audience. Maybe it will you know a lot of people look at AOE two and it's it's an inc incredibly pretty game. Yes. Uh, but I'm extremely impressed with the fact that you know you've taken that to the next level. Um, and it, I think it will have a wide appeal, obviously, to uh, you know a newer audience. But I think a lot of people in, in our community, at least, are definitely going to be wondering um, about well, basically how the, the multiplayer is and, and you know, how the spectator features are. I think that's something um, that you know, we can look forward to as well. Yeah, so uh, the, the one nice thing about multiplayer like it's been completely rewritten from scratch. Um, it has been completely pulled out. It was first uh, was peer to peer and now it's uh, server based yeah. uh, multiplayer. So that's, that's a big, big thing there uh, that we go going on there. Yeah, we do have a little bit of stuttering right now, and yes. uh, that's definitely on our end. Um, I think it's this <laughs> PC. Uh, we tested this before without any issues, but uh, it seems like something may have gone wrong in the meantime. Obviously, we are on a beta build right now, so uh, there's a lots of new stuff coming into the beta, or at yes. least you know updates mm -hmm. still to come, I believe, from you guys. Yeah, indeed. Uh, the, this, there is a lot of stutter going on right here. There's not the case during the test, sadly. Yeah, uh, yeah. We do have it now, but uh, indeed, it, as you said, it's also a beta. We're still actively working on it. Uh, we're still quite a few months uh, from release. Um, so yeah, it's, it's still uh, a lot of things going on. Yeah, um, development wise. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of the beta at home actually, and you know I've not had any issues myself. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's always one of those things where you do it live. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So at the moment, then let's just see. We can see on the right side with this uh, spectator UI, we can see that uh, it's doubt here in the red, researching up to the feudal age, mm -hmm. um, while Tato is currently still in the dark age at the moment. And one of the big things here is you can queue the technologies. You you wouldn't be able to do that before. You know you'd you train your villagers, but then you couldn't just add loom. You had to wait yes. for that to, to finish. Um, all right. Uh, we could try and cast from the POVs. Apparently, it's only lagging on our screen here, but the players okay. do not have any lag. Okay. So we could switch over to their POV. That would be great. Okay. Uh, we do have player POVs as well, so we have that backup. Uh, so there we go. We can see Tato okay. now. Uh, we'll cast from Tato's point of view. Um, obviously, uh, I will just drop out of the game. Actually, I'll leave it open yes. just in case. <laughs> but uh, we can see on Tato's screen then uh, how it's looking from his perspective. Um, and I guess uh, later on we can switch over to Doubt's perspective as well. We can see both. Uh, so yeah, that should be absolutely fine. Uh, the Tato there. Right, so I kind of lost our train of thought. We got a little bit distracted. <laughs> but I was saying uh, being able to, to queue up technologies, uh, quality of life features, which I think uh, a lot of people who, you know, perhaps they're familiar with, with newer RTS games, things like StarCraft II mm -hmm. um, and, and others, those are things that they just come to expect. And I think yes. I've seen a lot of people posting uh, on Reddit and such, like, oh, I'm from StarCraft 2, I'd like to get into AoE 2, how do I do this, how do I do that? What other quality life features might we see here in DE? We have so many little things, like the, the one thing that we really try to look out for is like, whatever we do, it still needs to be Age of Empires 2. In mm -hmm. any, yeah, the, the way you look at it, it's still good old Age of Empires, but indeed, a lot of things are just expected nowadays. You, you can't have a game without command cues, for example. Yes, That's yes. Any RTS game has it. You need to have the ability to zoom. I mean, we, we finally have it. It was not in the original game. Yeah, yeah. So uh, those things people just come to expect. I mean, not just from spectator mode, because in Game Trade we can zoom out. Yes. Uh, but in the game, you can't. But yes. now you can. Uh, and, and I think you, you mentioned cues earlier. I think cues is really the keyword on what we added to the game. We added command queue. We added mixed queue. We added uh, global queue. We added a uh, form queue. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Fish the trap auto queue. recede as well. Yes, yeah, auto yeah. recede, yes. Uh, also for fish traps. Mm -hmm. So um, 
which was surprisingly uh, often, often requested, I yeah. have to say. Yeah, I think so. And, and, and for me, I mean, these are very much quality of life things. Obviously, we, we did an Age of Empires 3 tournament last month, and uh, speaking to like the AoE 3 crowd, for example, who are used to having that command queue and you know shift clicking, mm -hmm. um, that is sorely missing for them. And so I think that's something that like the competitive scene and people who are playing more competitively will really appreciate. But I think you've got that balance, right? You've got the balance. You've got to, you've got to make it look great and work great for the single player crowd, yes. which I think you've, you've done amazingly. You can just zoom in. Uh, you can see all those amazing details and you have the, the quality of life there. But then when it comes to the competitive side, updated spectator and of course the uh, you know, things like shift clicking and, and all of that good stuff. Yeah. A little bit of a scuffle here then. So Doubt, um, in, if I'm not mistaken, should be getting a massive advantage when he fights downhill here. He does, but on the other hand, uh, Tato has the advantage that he had to free upgrade for his uh, uh, Man at Arms. So he tried to use his, uh, his advantage early, but on this map it's just really hard to abuse against Tatars. Yeah, we see a tower coming up on the back of that wood line as well for Dao. It's pretty nasty. Obviously, he's built two lumber lines there. That's where he's getting yes. his entire <laughs> wood economy from, and now it's denied by a single tower. Uh, Tato, uh, such an aggressive player. You like to see him going forward quite often, and you know that tower there is just denying so much from Dao. Uh, so yeah, in this situation, I mean, Tato did get cleaned up with those militia, and maybe now it's Dao's turn to strike back with a counter counter raid, mm -hmm. uh, but we'll need to relocate those lumber camps, which is going to be a pain uh, for doubt. But at the moment, uh, it could be quite even, scores are very even, and uh, we'll certainly see the game develop probably towards the castle age at this rate. I'll be curious to see what Tato goes into next. Um, let's talk a little bit about the unique units of these sips. Obviously, um, we may not see... Oh, we've got actually a, a pretty big raid on the wood line there on Tato. So we've got the counter attack from doubt coming in. Um, and you can see there, he might pick up some villager kills because they're so far from safety. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's still a very open map that is Acropolis. Uh, uh, Bulgarians are really focused on, on like this, this really tight warfare. They actually have a few bonuses that lend itself to that. Uh, speaking of the unique unit of the, the Bulgarians, uh, it's the Konik. And the Konik is um, a unit with basically two lives. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a guy on the horse, uh, a heavy cavalry guy. Uh, I think the stats are quite comparable to um, a Cavalier, something like that. Okay. Uh, but once you kill him, he's just actually thrown off the horse and then he fights again as an infantry unit. Like a so dismounted knight, basically. Exactly. He gets up, polishes himself off, dusts himself yes. off, and he's fine <laughs> to go again. All right. And what, what is, what, is he strong when he's off the horse as well, or is he much weaker at that point? He is much weaker at that point, mm. but uh, it, it really messes with counters because, I mean, if you have a bunch of Halberdies sure. going at the horses and then all of a sudden it's a champion-like unit against yeah, your yeah. Halberdier, yeah, it's, it turns it around. That's mm. really interesting, actually. Yeah. I mean, that's something that's like entirely new and yeah. different, innovative. Uh, and then what about the, the, the uh, Tartars? What, what are they looking at? Uh, so that's a heavy cavalry unit, actually. So that's a Keshik, um, and that is a unit that uh, it's it's basically a raiding unit. And we're like, how can we add a raiding mechanic to uh, Age Vampires? And well, he is just a cavalry unit, and as he fights, he generates gold. Okay, so there you go. So is that sort of like uh, gold per kill, or is it sort of just uh, as long damage? as it attacks? Okay, uh, it will generate gold. That's really interesting. Yeah. So essentially, you, you could uh, you know be completely out of gold get a huge raid off, and then bam, you you've got a little bit of gold coming in. You could, yes. All right, interesting. I'm, I'm always curious to sort of hear about new ideas of generating gold, especially when the gold is all gone from the map, especially, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, even more so in a 1v1. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so that's really interesting as well. Um, we might be able to look at the tech trees after the game to sort of break that down a little bit more. Yep. Obviously, we're watching the players' POVs right now. It seems like both players are quite happy to continue with the scout production, so that's going to slow them down a little bit when it comes to going up to the castle age. You can see Tato uh, barely has 100 food in mm -hmm. the bank there. And uh, while we look up toward that top area of the, the screen. Um, you can see there's, it's quite small because he's got his UI sort of very small right yes. now. That's something you can do now in DE. You can change the UI scale uh, so you can make it bigger or smaller as you please. Uh, but you can see he, he's got some little indicators underneath um, the icons that show just how many U villages he has on that resource. Exactly. So again, another quality of life thing, really. Exactly. It, what we really want to give players is like an overview of the game at any time. That's that's really the big thing that we try to go for. So yeah, you have the, the indicator of how many villagers are on each resource. Uh, and then also right underneath, this is like a global queue. 
uh, so you know what exactly you're queuing. What's everywhere. being trained. Exactly. Yeah. And you can also look, just click on those icons and it will jump uh, oh. directly to the building where it's being produced. Okay. I mean, that's really useful, yeah. right? I mean, especially if it gets really messy and oh, yes. you, know, you accidentally <laughs> queue up like 10 units. I don't know. I saw an instance yesterday actually where that could have been useful in the, in the last game. Yeah. Uh, I remember seeing a bunch of Teutonic Knights queued at a castle like 10 miles yes. back from the front line. <laughs> Would have been great to just go straight there and cancel them. But uh, yeah. And also at the bottom of the screen, uh, sort of where the player cams are, you can see the control groups down there as well, yes. I believe. Indeed. So it, it's a lot easier to just see like what's where. Um, and yeah, if the group is dead, the, the icon will disappear. So you will also immediately see if things go south. Yeah. Awesome stuff. So uh, at the moment, yeah, Doubts has a small score lead. He's continuing to, being uh, continue to be raided by Tato, uh, but he's seeded out a lot of farms. He's got 19 vills on food here, so uh, he's looking towards the Castle Age. Obviously, he's halfway there on food. He's definitely got the gold already. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a question of whether or not he can defend this raiding, and uh, obviously with such an open map, uh, that does become quite problematic at times. Yeah. But one funny thing as well is that I uh, actually just noticed, and it's a question that I got a lot here, uh, at land, what is actually the speed of the E? Ah, that's a great question. Is it actually normal speed or is it uh, the, the slightly higher speed? Yeah. I just noticed that we're actually playing on the old speed 1.5, yeah. yeah. The beta still has the older speed, but actually the uh, release version will have uh, will be played on 1.7 instead of 1.5. Yeah, that, that was a big thing actually with HD. Obviously, um, it, it was originally a bug, as essentially, yes. <laughs> that uh, AO, uh, the, the uh, CD version of the game in multiplayer played slightly faster. Yeah. So over the years, players just got used to that. And, uh -huh. and then when you go back to playing at the you know correct speed, it suddenly yes. feels a little <laughs> wrong. So it's really cool. You guys are obviously going to speed the game up a little bit. A uh, tiny bit, yes. Just a tiny bit, just to sort of help with that competitive environment, I yeah. think, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it does look a tiny bit slow compared to all the games that we've had this weekend, yeah, but yeah. That's, that's exactly the explanation. And that's why. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, yeah, Doubt, uh, very, very close to Castle Age now. He's got a little bit too much gold, but he's got definitely got the food that he needs. He's just clicked up. Uh, adding in archery ranges now as the Tartars. Uh, do they have a good archery line? Uh, they definitely have good cavalry archers, and especially with the, the hill bonus, uh, that's ideal for cavalry archers, especially Absolutely. on this map. Uh, it will be hard for uh, Tati to reply to that, actually. Um, their infantry for the Bulgarians has extra armor, but I actually have to check if it's Pierce armor or normal armor. I think we can check over on our second monitor here, actually. We can here, check actually. here, okay. we, we can do that. Don't worry, we've got you covered. Um, yeah, actually, you know, we may as well actually run through the, the SIP bonuses. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't really do that at the start, but I think now's a good opportunity. So uh, the Bulgarians, uh, which is what Tato's playing here in the blue, um, their militia upgrades for free, of course. So mm -hmm. as soon as you reach the feudal age, I imagine that uh, mana arms upgrade kicks in immediately. Yes. Um, and then the town centers cost half stone. So it, this could be quite a big boomy sieve. Oh, Tato's actually getting a, another good raid going here. It is a bit of a boomy sif uh, because we kind of want to encourage that, but also uh, one of the other bonuses of the Bulgarians is that they have uh, the Cray Post, mm -hmm. which is a different building. It's kind of like a mini castle, okay. uh, so you can train your unique unit there. Um, you can't do upgrades there, you can train your unique unit there, and it basically uh, acts like a castle. It still has the attack, it has the uh, good amount of hit points, okay. uh, but it's, it's not the the full castle. It's, it goes down. Right, right. Stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's sort of like, um, you know, this sort of fortified building, yeah. get your unique unit, but it's not super strong. Exactly. Uh, obviously, that would be kind of crazy. Uh, but they would save a lot of uh, stone on TCs. So uh, maybe, you know, exactly. that kind of, you know, defensive style, perhaps, uh, building crepos in yeah. your economy while you build that up uh, could be an option as well. Uh, but yeah, Tato getting some good raids going at the back, continuing to stay feudal for now, it seems, mm -hmm. while Doubt is, I uh, believe, on the way up to the Castle Age. We can check his point of view as well to see that but he's losing quite a few villages out here there you go castle age upgrade in and you can see those beautiful buildings just yes. you know come to life as he ages up there uh, but more towers denying doubts gold on the left side he's losing out villages at the back as well uh, but he does have gold down on the low ground here so now he's castle age he's got to spend down those resources get some more units in queue uh, as far as i can see he is not queuing anything right now um the fun thing about towers as something. well is that uh, I, I don't think uh, Doubt knows uh, yet, but there have been balance changes. Uh, of course, they will be there on release. Uh, towers have been significantly weakened, so I okay. think if he would actually run up with some villagers, he would actually be able to take them down uh, rather easily. Okay, so in what way have they been weakened exactly? Is it sort of like a you know 
villagers do more damage to them or do they do less um, damage in return or actually just the hit points oh okay we tried so many things to, <laughs> to balance the, right, the towers right. and then yeah. in the end we were like hey what if we just reduce the hit points and we're like hey that actually seems to work so yeah <laughs> for sure go. towers have been a massive sticking point for so long uh, finding the right balance for that is, is a huge challenge so yeah. uh, i know you guys at forgotten empires have been taking a lot of balance feedback from expert players as well um, and i imagine that's probably helped quite significantly oh yes it yeah. does help so much so much and also for for uh, on release, uh, we always make the the new civilization slime a bit stronger, and that's on purpose, right? Like right, you have those right. new civilizations, um, you kind of want to try around, play around, try new tactics, but then yes. you have to play against somebody who's been playing the hunts competitively for 20 years, so it needs to be a <laughs> tiny bit stronger. But yeah, yeah. But then afterwards, you just uh, you you just make the adjustments as yeah. You can fine tune, right? Like obviously. Um, at first, you need to find where that, that, that civilization excels and then, and then work from there. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, this is interesting. I mean, something that I'm noticing when we're switching between the POVs, Tato's playing a lot more sort of zoomed in. Doubt's mm -hmm. certainly zooming more out. Yeah. And I guess that's, you know, player preference entirely. It yeah. uh, gives you that opportunity to, to set it just how you like. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Tato's still feudal at the moment. Um, probably thinks, thinking about going up soon. I mean, he did two stable full scout rush, which is yes. <laughs> very <laughs> aggressive. But now Doubt's in the Castle Age. He's got cavalry archers out. He's going to start to push this back and repel this a little bit. Um, we talked about the Bulgarians and their bonuses. Obviously, just to reiterate that, uh, militia line upgrades for free, town centers 50% less stone, and they can build the Krepost, which is a sort of like a weaker castle that can build their unique unit. Uh, their unique text, though, uh, scout, cavalry line, and conics, which is their unique unit, uh, they attack 25% faster. Yeah. Uh, that's the stirrups upgrade. And actually, I think, uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, I, 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 oh, that's my screen. Okay, that's I was like, Tato's <laughs> checking the tech tree. Can he hear us right now? Uh, yeah, we can see the tech tree here. Just, uh, I'm just reading this off. Um, and and uh, ba I'm terrible at pronouncing it. Bagans? I would say Bagans. I'm Bagans, not sure either. <laughs> whatever it is. Um, militia line plus three armor. That's pretty huge, actually. Yes, indeed. So, yeah, it's, it's one of those things like, let's, let's see how it works out. Does it work out great if we need to make uh, balance changes? We still do it. Because that's one of yeah. the nice things. Like, we're going to release the game. And we're going to start supporting it straight away. And if, okay. if we need to make balance changes quite quickly, we will have the chance to do so. That's awesome. And I mean, it's much needed, right? I mean, it, 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 you can only test with so many people and, and things can just sort of come out of nowhere. And you're like, okay, yeah, this needs addressing. So it's great that you're able to do that. Yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah, like you don't know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm quite sure that uh, if you look at how the game is played nowadays, on some studios would have never predicted <laughs> yeah. it actually yeah. played like that. Right, so I'm sure there's probably some questions here. Um, if you've ever watched Tato or Doubt streaming, uh, you've probably noticed that they don't normally play with the big trees. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, in the beta, big trees just as the game comes. Yes. Um, what's sort of like modding support looking like? Are we going to be able to see uh, small tree mods? Are we going to be able to see all of that stuff? Uh, I already have a small tree mod on my computer, Fantastic. so it, <laughs> it, it will be there. Uh, if it's not going to be implemented like straight into the option screen, it will at least be available straight away as, uh, uh, as a mod option. So it, it will be there. Same for a s no snow mod. Okay, um, so that's going to be built in. Um, if it's not, it's going to be uh, directly available through the mod center. So okay. uh, right now, if you go to the options screen, uh, we have like, I think, four pages of options of things okay. that you can talk with. It's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> people love options. So yeah, hey, options are great. Options are great. That's the first thing I do. I boot up a new game. I go through all the options. Yes. <laughs> then I play the game. <laughs> See what's there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's that's really what we try to focus on. Uh, a lot of, of, of yeah, options for people to, to tweak the game to their taste. Um, and I think the the one mod that's in there is the grid op, uh, grid option. Okay, so yeah, you can yeah. just turn on the tr the grid terrain. Because in the past it was always difficult. Like, oh, I have this nice texture mod, mm -hmm. and I can't combine it with my grid mod. So the grid's so. something on another level that can just be put exactly. to on any texture mod. So obviously we know this is coming out on Steam. Yes. Uh, will it be using the Steam Workshop then in that case? Uh, it actually won't because it will be coming out on Steam and it also on the Windows Store. Okay. Uh, so uh, sorry, the Microsoft Store. So to make sure that. Uh, mods are available for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, the mods will all go through hvampires.com. Okay, and there'll be plenty of modding support for those people that want to make their mods. What about existing mods for HD? Would they be, I mean, obviously, r texture mods will be a whole different uh, <laughs> thing entirely, I imagine. But uh, would there be mods that are transferable, or is it something that they need to do from scratch? 
Um, we try to avoid uh, that people have to remake mods from scratch as much as possible. So even the graphics, if you have graphics mods with the good old uh, original game graphics, you can just convert them. Okay. And yeah, that, that works. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I didn't expect that, to be honest. That's really cool. <laughs> um, and also, I, I mean, I'm trying to cover all the bases here <laughs> because Doubt looks like he's like getting pretty far ahead. It's so looking pretty bad it's, for Doubt. It's Tato. looking really good for Doubt, but uh, yeah. Um, Regards to AI, there's a lot of questions about AI. Obviously, you know, we've got the multiplayer um, focus here at the event, but there's a lot of single players out there as well. They want to know about AI. Um, will there be better AI capabilities? You know, what's that going to be looking like? So the, the AI, we try to focus it on two things. So one is just making a better AI. Um, it's, it's not like uh, completely overpowered, super strong AI. It still needs to be fun, right? Mm -hmm. Especially for casual players. They of want course. variation, a good game, uh, like not too try hard. On the other hand, we did add uh, an extreme difficulty level. So, so uh, one step above? <laughs> one step above. Okay. Uh, it, it is really hard, I have to say. I usually play on, on extreme and I often get my ass handed to me. So really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, that's, that's good. I mean, yes. you're a very good player, so uh, that says a lot about okay. the AI, right? <laughs> Um, so that's one thing we try to make the eye, of course, uh, a lot better, but also we try to um, um, add a bit more interaction with the AI. So we, uh, you know, in the original game, you had like, uh, give me some gold or uh, right. do you have yeah. extra resources or make extra villagers. I think in the original game, you had like, what, seven commands? Okay. Like, gold please, wood please. Attack Stone now. Food, attack now. Exactly. You know, stop building a navy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and he would not always listen anyway, so yeah, there, there right. you go. <laughs> um, and now we have, I think, 80 uh, commands or something like okay, that. Okay, wow. Okay. So, yeah, that's uh, a is that all more. through the taunt system? Yes, that's all through the taunt system. All right. Uh, and you can Whoa. just at the very start of the game, you can say, like, oh, try to go for a fast castle. Oh, wow. So you can give them, like, uh, AI objectives, essentially. Yeah. Wow, that's exactly. awesome. So uh, that's then obviously you'd be able to change that mid game, I assume. Um, you can, okay. but of course, uh, if, if you say, uh, right, like, if I've been building for a night rush the whole time and then change your mind last second, of course. Oh, yeah, right, <laughs> right. Okay, that's unreasonable, but yeah. But awesome. That sounds amazing. That's really cool. I mean, I, I know that a lot of people really enjoy, you know, to play against the AI, especially before going into multiplayer. A lot of people just want to, you know, get familiar with the game and mm -hmm. to have that sort of difficulty level where they can actually get pretty good mm -hmm. uh, at, at training against AI. I think it gives a lot of confidence to people then going online. Uh, we just saw the tower being destroyed yes. there. You get those amazing <laughs> building destruction uh, animations. Uh, I mean, the, the graphical effects are absolutely incredible. We're very happy with how the graphics turned out, and not just because they look a lot better, be but also because they're so recognizable. We right. really try to make sure that uh, whatever unit you see, uh, if you played the game for 20 years, it's like, okay, I still completely recognize this unit. Yeah, I don't absolutely. Even recognize everything from, from scratch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, there'll be, there'll be some small things where it's like, okay, just at first, you might be, uh, okay, just double check. But I mean, after a while, I mean, you got to learn it anyway. I mean, yeah. that's something that everyone had to do for AoE 2 regardless. Yes. So, yeah, you yeah. know, that's really awesome. And obviously, the, the buildings maintain their iconic shape. I mean, oh, everyone yes. knows an archery range from that shape. Everyone knows the TC from that shape. Exactly, because it, this is this is new civilization. This is not our new new architecture set, but there is no doubt in mind. Like, okay, that's a market that we just saw there. Like, everybody yeah. just recognizes it. Absolutely, like that. So, speaking of architecture sets um, yes. in HD and, and AOC, uh, we had sort of you know civilization sharing architecture sets. Will we still see that? Will there be new architecture for all the civs? Uh, no, we, we, we're still sharing our architecture. Okay. Uh, it, it does help recognizability. Mm -hmm. um, for, for building, it's okay. But there was a lot of requests like, hey, can we have like different unit skins? Like, can I have a Mayan archer looking different from a Chinese archer and from a Frankish right, archer? Right, right. Uh, but at that point, it gets really, um, yeah, complicated. Yeah, it does, yeah. It does get uh, tricky. Like, the, the one thing about, about RTS games is like, a unit needs to be instantly recognizable. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the things that we really want to keep there. Awesome. So, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Um, but I think with, when it comes to modding, would then that sort of stuff be possible through modding, perhaps? It is possible, but yeah. on the other hand, like, it, it does also increase the file size of the game quite a bit. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I believe it's, um, it, it's quite large download. Obviously, with the 4K textures, it adds quite a lot. But uh, they do look absolutely stunning, so that's understandable. Um, yeah, doubt at the moment, though, looking really good. Um, considerable score lead, and those cavalry archers are just raiding around absolutely everywhere. Tato is still feudal. Um, I'm not sure if he's ever going to go up this game. 
game. Um, I'm not sure if he's actually upgrading right now. Uh, but before uh, the GG does potentially get called in the next few minutes, uh, let's talk a little bit about the Tartars. We'll go over their sub bonuses as well. Doubt uh, playing as the Tartars here in the red. Um, so the sheep for the Tartars contain 50% extra food. That's going to give you a good start it's good every start, time. Yeah. Exactly. Does that also apply to cows? Uh, yes. Okay. All sheep-like. So yeah, okay, yes. livestock then, I suppose. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I mean, obviously, a cow has 150 food, so mm. that would be even more of a boost. Uh, sorry, a, a cow would have 150 food, and then it would get 50 percent on top of that. Yes, exactly. Okay. That's wow. A good boost, yes. All right. So Tata is going to be good on s some maps more than others. Uh, units <laughs> deal 25 percent additional damage when fighting from higher elevation. We talked about that. Yes. Uh, that's just across the board. That's not just cavalry. Uh, that is for all units. I okay. mean, it, it of course matters more for cavalry archers because they just benefit more from that uh, hill advantage. They yeah. can pick their fights much easier. Yeah. And then also one that fits with it is the, the free partial tactics. Yeah, I see that. So obviously cav archer uh, really fits that really nicely. Yeah. Um, and then unique tech, uh, sorry, unique unit rather, the Keshik, the raiding cavalry, which generates yes. the gold, which you mentioned. Um, and then the unique tech, the silk armor, which gives the scout cavalry line and cavalry archers an extra one pierce armor, which I think is completely reasonable. Yes. Uh, and then uh, Timurid Siegecraft. It's Trebuchet's plus one range. Yes. That That's going to be good for Treb Wars. <laughs> oh, yes. It's, it's very good. It's not as good as Warwolf, but it's, it's really, really nice. So. so I can't help but notice the, the, the Step Lancer here. Yes. Uh, what, what is that? <laughs> so that's uh, a slight, uh, like a ranged cavalry. It's a cavalry with one range at this point. Okay. Uh, and it's, it's basically like just for the, the Kumans and the Tatars, they can use this uh, new cavalry unit in their stable. Okay. And I also noticed the camel has been renamed the Camel Rider. Yes. We had, yeah, we had the, the, the wild Gaia camel in the yes, game. And it was, was a bit confusing for, so yeah, it's now <laughs> the Camel Rider. <laughs> All uh, right, we're just going to go through the tech tree here, just give guys at home a, a little bit more of an, in, uh, an idea of what's going on. Yep. Uh, you can see, obviously, all the new uh, artwork in the tech tree as well. Looking fantastic. Pretty poor monastery. It's, uh, yeah, let's not, not talk about best, that. Not the best. <laughs> <laughs> But All again, right. like everything we see here, it's 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 balance changes that can eventually change uh, the sit quite a bit later on. So yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Tato is still hanging in there. He is now age three, can yes. confirm. And I believe that is that a castle? Oh, That's is that a Keshik? Oh, uh, um, not a Keshik, sorry. Uh, it was the Crepost. Crepost. It Crepost. Was, yes, yes, yes. Yes. We saw um, it there. It's it's quite cheap. I'm I'm not sure about the actual price. I think it's three hundred or three three hundred fifty stone. Uh, so yeah, roughly half the price of castle. In in almost each respect, it's half of castle, okay. like half the HP, half the <laughs> half the cost. Yeah, right, right. Uh, half the abilities. Yeah, so, yeah. Because one of the biggest challenges, you know, when you when you're castle age and a castle goes down, taking down a castle in the castle age, yes. yeah, it's not so easy. You know, you need a lot of rams, or you know, or you just avoid it altogether. Uh, I guess you know you could deal with the crepost in the castle age with a couple of rams if you needed to. Uh, you could, but I mean, uh, again, you can make uh, the unique unit straight from the castle, and it's a unique unit that's really good against ramps. I mean, it's cavalry. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. That also makes a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah of it course. does. It's good for defending yeah. uh, in every sense of the word. So, Tauto now sort of, you know, taking advantage of the fact his TCs cost half the stone, 50 yes. stone instead of 100. Can easily slam them down, try and catch up a little bit in villages, because obviously doubt has been in uh, the castle age for a while now and has quite yes. a few mm -hmm. TCs and obviously a lot more villages at this point. It's a it's a nice synergy as well. Like you have the cheaper castle, the grey post. Mm -hmm. uh, you you have the cheaper town center, so you you kind of can save your stone like that and spend it on other things. That's yeah. kind of the synergy that we try to go to when we when we build the new civilizations. Yeah, awesome. So I uh, just want to ask as well about sort of like the online multiplayer. Um, obviously, there will be an inbuilt lobby system. Yes. Um, is there going to be anything like matchmaking or anything along those lines? Uh, there will be matchmaking. So uh, currently, I think if you click on the multiplayer button, the first tab that shows up, if not, it will be changed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will be the matchmaking uh, screen. Uh, and then you will be, uh, they will try to match you to somebody who's close to you uh, in terms of uh, in terms of range, uh, uh, sorry, in terms of rating. Skill level, yeah, yes. right, okay. That's awesome. I mean, obviously that's something that uh, I think it's good because I, I know a lot of people who sort of want to play competitively. Uh, they don't want to have to browse lobbies. They can just sort yeah. of press matchmaking and then it, that will sh you know, trick them into a game when they're ready. So that's exactly. great. Exactly, especially because Age of Empires is a very daunting game. It's, if you start multiplayer, there's so much settings to go on. Like yeah. if you just want to open your own lobby, for a lot of players it's like, what do I pick? Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot to do. Exactly. So you just Play, play, play in matchmaking and the game tries to give you good presets. It's actually awesome. something that we're also still working on, like making sure that 
whatever you play, you get good presets for the settings you pick. Awesome. Because we see a lot of uh, casual players that are like, oh, wouldn't it be fun to play like a, um, an island map with King of the Hill on Ludacris? <laughs> and it's like, that's a game that takes five hours. Yeah, right. <laughs> Not everyone has five hours. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So uh, if there's any questions uh, in the chat, uh, do feel free to send them our way and uh, we'll address what we can. I've sort of gone through all my questions at the moment, but uh, the game's still going on here. Tato sort of bouncing back a little bit, uh, starting to build out in the middle of the map, continuing to try and raid. But that's his unique unit right there, actually, uh, in that group of units uh, that we just saw. Yeah, uh, I see a lot of people also in the chat asking, hey, what about performance? Because that's one of the big things, like it's an RTS game, so we want to make sure that it runs well. So I believe that both layers have their uh, frame rate counter uh, going on at the top of the screen. Yeah. So both layers are, are running at 60 FPS, so that's that's good to see. Yeah, I believe always. that's also V-Sync is on, so the monitor will be 60 hertz and oh, it's there you just go. capped at that. So um, it I can be higher, basically. Yeah, I turned <laughs> V-Sync off uh, earlier and it went up to like 100 and something. So There you go. Yeah. Uh, a lot of questions coming in. Uh, any new standard maps? That's the first thing I'm seeing. Uh, new standard maps, yes, there will be new standard maps uh, that came with like the, the theme of Last Khan's new expansion. So yeah, a few oh. new maps as well. Yeah, um, you just reminded me entirely. Like <laughs> new campaigns, ev like there's so much to this game. Yes. Seriously, <laughs> we, we can sit here and talk for hours. Um, talk me through the, the new campaign. Okay, so we have uh, three new campaigns. We have uh, Kochan Khan, uh, Ifailo, and Tamer Lane. Tamer Lane, we all know because he's yeah. been in the game since forever <laughs> and he never had a campaign, so now he finally has a campaign. Uh, so yeah, three of, uh, of the four new Sifts actually get a new campaign. Uh, on top of that, uh, all the other campaigns have been, uh, I'm not going to say remade, but they have been, um, uh, I'm sure that's it, tweaked, touched Polished? Up. Yeah, polished, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, it, it, it's still the good old missions. Like, if you play John of Arc again, you, you immediately recognize, okay, this is good old John of Arc. There's no change there. Uh, but all the voice acting, for example, has been redone uh, okay. for all the... Uh, civilization. All the for forgotten uh, campaigns, they finally have voice acting. Oh, so that's amazing. something amazing. that people really love. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. That's really cool. So uh, plenty to look forward to then if you're a campaign player. Um, get your hands stuck on, uh, st stuck into that. Um, more questions from the chat. Uh, let's have a look what we've got. I'm, uh, I'm just trying to see what I can see here. Will there be a lobby? Oh, it's Chat's going too fast, Sijin. This, this is a problem. <laughs> too can many you, questions. Can you guys slow down a little bit? That'd be great. Um, what is the uh, shimmer over some of the farms and buildings? Great question. Uh, okay. I think I could answer that even. Okay, you, go ahead. Um, <laughs> the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the shimmer is when you're researching something. Um, so if you are, you know, for example, aging up to the next age, then your town center will sort of glow a little bit uh, to indicate that. Uh, but is that visible to your opponent as well? No, absolutely not. That would give way too much information. It would. Yes. <laughs> So that is something you see as a player. So I, I guess if you see your TC glowing and your opponent sort of you know barreling into your base, you're like, oh, might need to change the Imperial Age upgrade TC yes. before it goes down. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's really what we try to focus on, like make the e the game a bit easier to read. So that's one of those things. Yeah. Um, how will the spectator mode look like? Uh, we had spectator mode up a little bit earlier, but it got a little bit choppy on this PC for some reason. So uh, we can show you spectator mode again at the end of the game. I'll just sort of load that back in and we can just go over that. Um, did you nerf quick walling? Um, I don't think we did, actually. Okay. Especially quick walling, I, we're quite fine with that. Uh, quick gating, uh, I talked about with a few uh, pro players here, and there seems to be a bit, not not a consensus yet. Yeah, uh, rotatable gates definitely change things it considerably. It does change things, yes, yes absolutely. Uh, but we, we will monitor, we will see what happens, what, what people think, if they want to change it, because we have solutions. It's just like, do we need to add them or not? So right, right. But, but quick walling, I think, it's it's fine. It's 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 a high skill. Uh, of course, I mean it's not something that everyone can do, and exactly. if you can do it, then good for you. You exactly. deserve to be able to pull that <laughs> off, in my opinion. I mean, the thing with quick walling that I think a lot of people don't realize is you have to have the foresight. It's not something yes. you just do. You have to see it and and you have to react to it quickly enough. You know. Yeah. So, um, uh, how is the map picked in matchmaking? Uh, so there's a map pool. Uh, we can easily change those map pools if we see like, okay, people don't like certain map in the pool. Uh, but I think currently there are uh, 10 uh, maps in the pool. Okay. And we try to go for like standard maps, like not nothing ex extremely exotic. Like you're not going to get Socotra in, the, in the, the map pool, for example. But there will be Arabia, there will be uh, Valley, I believe. So there, there's, there's some... Uh, Standard maps, I would say, and then randomly one of those. Right. Okay. So kind of like uh, you know, you you can 
can you pick the, the, any of the maps, or is it just sort of like these set maps, and you get I would have thrown to check. onto a random one? I would have to check. Okay. Currently, it's I think currently it's random. But yeah. Have to okay. Check. <laughs> I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it means that players you know get that variety as well. Um, you know, it's it's difficult to know the right way to do this kind of thing because. Yes. Uh, in my opinion, for example, I think having a variety of maps is very good, but also yeah. perhaps people just want to play Arabia, so uh, trying to cater to both audiences is maybe a little, a little tough. We want to make sure that people don't feel like, oh, the Age of Empires is only Arabia, because it's not. So we, we try to give a bit of variation, but you know, if you just want to play Arabia, just go to multiplayer, host a game of Arabia, and that's it. The lobby is still there. There is matchmaking, but the lobby is still there. Yeah, yeah. awesome. So, um, pathing. Pathfinding. Pathfinding is something yes. that uh, a lot of people <laughs> I've just saw in the Sogon, like P-A-T-H-I-N-G. <laughs> Tell us about that. <laughs> Tell us about Pathfinding. <laughs> so uh, Pathfinding was, yeah, that's that's always the trickiest thing in, in any RTS games, right? Uh, so the one thing with Pathfinding is we really try to keep the the system of, like the, how should I say, the, the inherent design of Pathfinding is still there. So what that means is, for example, I'll, the best example I can always give is, let's, let's say you have two pikemen standing uh, in line mm -hmm. and you have a big fat element, elephant right behind it. Uh, in a lot of games, uh, especially in StarCraft, for example, uh, the big unit would push through the other two units, right? Mm -hmm. It will push them aside and then make space. That is something that we absolutely did not want because that completely changes the way the game is played. Okay. So a unit, once it's in place, it will still completely block whatever comes behind. Okay. So the, the kind of like balls of units yeah. that you have in, in more modern RTS games, we don't have that. We still rely a lot on formations, okay. on movement, uh, and we're not going for that kind of flow field mm. feeling of pathfinding. That's right. not what we go for. However, what we definitely try to improve on is, for example, targeting. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do the attack move, for example, you can go, uh, yeah, you just attack move or patrol. Uh, it's now much, much better in, in actually picking its targets. Uh, we also try to make sure that, uh, in a lot of cases, try to pick the shortest path, like actually picking the best path. Yeah, <laughs> in right. Ninja Vampires, you sometimes feel like, hey, is that really the best path? Yeah. Uh, but we really try to focus on those things. So it's still the same system, mm -hmm. but we try to improve the existing system. Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, uh, just to address the, the FPS thing, uh, the game's running at 60 for the players, but uh, it's captured at 30 uh, due to the stream. So oh. that would be why it looks a little bit uh, choppy to the people on the stream. On our screen, it's, it's running just yeah, at 60. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was like, mm, what are they talking about? But yeah, it's yeah. just we're, we're capturing their screens at 30 FPS, so yeah. that would be why. Uh, obviously, on the streaming PC, it would be at 60 as well. But uh, yeah, uh, will DE use the same ELO system as the uh, HD or Vubly? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, yeah, you start 1600, um, and then, yeah, it's it's good old. Okay. Good old so, uh, classic, just grinding out the points? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's familiar, let's put yeah, it like right, that. Right. It's familiar. Course, yeah. Awesome. Um, will a user be able to see how many games uh, someone in a lobby has played? So, sort of like user profiles, things like that. Uh, so uh, on ageofempires.com, people will have uh, player profiles with all the information uh, of, of games they played. But um, there is like a lot of community effort as well, like uh, like oh, we want this information, we're gathering this information, and probably not everything will be there at launch. But uh, as we said earlier, like that, we're just gonna keep on working on the game. So <laughs> if if we feel like we need to add more information to people's uh, people's player profiles, we can just do it. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And uh, as far as sort of like ongoing support goes, uh, once the game is released, and uh, you know you can pick it up uh, in November, I believe it's yes. uh, what is the actual release date confirmed? It's the it's it's fourteen eleven. Uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> intentional. <laughs> Even if we tried, we couldn't do it that good. So, <laughs> so yeah, fourteenth uh, of November it will be out uh, on uh, both on Steam and Microsoft Store. Okay, and uh, when it is available, uh, obviously it will be, you know, is it in its final state or will there be, you know, continuous development after the fact as well? Oh, yeah, yeah, that is that is the definitely uh, something that we all want to stretch, uh, that Microsoft wants to stretch as well. Like, this is not something that's going to be released and then that's it. Yeah, that okay. is not the case. <laughs> so, ongoing updates and, uh, you know, is there any sort of big things that, uh, you know, you might... You know, want to to do that isn't in the game yet, that may be coming later. 
we will talk about those when we get there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. When we get there, no problem. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to poke and prod a little bit too far, I yeah. think. Um, <laughs> uh, will people be able to host their own servers over LAN? Um, I would have to check, like, how are we playing now? I mean, the, the option will uh, be We're playing there. with the dedicated server through the oh, matchmaking okay. at the so moment. Yeah. Yes. The, the goal is that uh, people will also be able to host their own server and uh, play LAN uh, as such. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, with dedicated servers, it, it's going to be a massive upgrade to multiplayer performance. Obviously, when it comes to having an eight-player game with peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, there's a huge number of connections there and everything has to stay in sync. Um, with the servers then, um, I, I assume everyone's connecting to one location and then that's helping massively with, with game uh, sort of uh, latency and things like that. Yes, it, it, it changes the way the game runs a lot. Um, just, I mean, uh, now you kind of have the problem where you play the game, uh, you have one player who can't really keep up and everybody's punished. Mm. And with the server setup, um, I mean, all players still kind of feel it, but the, the, the slow player will feel it more. Okay. And the others will feel it a lot less. So okay. that's, a, that's a big improvement. So, so sort of like the slow player doesn't drag everyone else down, but they exactly. sort of just, you know, they feel it more themselves. Yes. Okay. Exactly. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Questions about sort of where the servers are located. There's going to be servers in every region, so that there's you know optimal performance around the world. I don't know the exact locations, mm. but uh, I know that there's at least one in every continent at the moment. Okay. Uh, there's uh, we have Western Europe, we have North America, we have Australia. So I awesome. I don't know the exact ones, but we have a lot. Yeah. Right. That's great. Um, anyway, this game uh, raging on. Um, yes. it's, it's been a long <laughs> one. Doubt here, uh, trying to raid all over the place with his unique units. I think I've seen some step riders from him. Uh, lots of his unique units there as well, coming out raiding. And of course, he's earning gold while he does that as well, which is fantastic for him. Yes, um, gold will start to run out eventually. So his sim seems to be well suited for this sort of one v one situation. Uh, Tato is just sort of doing full halb at the moment, uh, I believe, and just sort of trying to chase these cavalry units down, but they're everywhere. They're all over them. Yeah, it, that's something that, that uh, Tatar is really, really good at. They can just flood the map and be all over the place at the same time. So they, he's really trying to use that uh, bonus really, really well. Yeah, I mean, we can see from Tato's point of view, he's just trying to chase down all these uh, these cavalry units in his base, and he's yeah. using <laughs> villages all over the place. Um, so many of those TCs belled up, and just, you know, villages not gathering. So uh, it may be Doubt's game. I mean, obviously, Tato still has quite a high um, population at the moment. He's at about 190 out of 200, so he's not exactly, you know, on his knees here. No. Uh, <laughs> but the pressure is certainly on for him at the moment. Yeah, especially if we saw at the beginning where we were so far behind. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely made a, a good comeback there. Yeah, I think the ability to do like that quick boom with the Bulgarians, obviously the cheaper TCs, uh, it's great just for fortifying, but also for you know catching up if you do fall behind in Vils. If you've got the food for it, you can just, you know, bam, 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 villages yeah. everywhere. Um, People are saying about scaling up the minimap. Um, you can make it larger, yes. Uh, yes. You can see there, there's a difference yeah. between Tato and Doubt even um, on the UI scale. You can tweak that. Uh, you can make it pretty big, actually. You can make it pretty big. So the yeah. UI is completely tweakable, um, in, in, or at least scalable. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can go from, I think, 75% to 125% uh, of size. So what, whatever resolution you run at, uh, you should be able to have a good uh, readable UI. Uh, some more technical questions coming in. Uh, will you be able to scan with buildings? Are you able to sort of, you know, put the building in the fog of war and see <laughs> if there's something below it? That's still uh, an ongoing conversation. Okay. So we will see what we do there. It's, it's not that urgent. I mean, the game works perfectly fine like this. Mm -hmm. uh, but if we feel like we want to change it, we can totally change it. Yeah. yeah. Bless you, Tato. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just having a little sneeze there. Um, there's so many questions in the chat. Lots and lots of tags coming in. Um, I see one uh, question that keeps on returning. Do alt RMS maps work in DE? Uh, yes, they do. Uh, you just can copy them over and then they still run. And we yeah. also have new RMS capabilities, but I can't talk about those just yet. Okay. Yeah. Well, actually, um, for those interested, we uh, you may have seen before we start the, the uh, games on the main stage, we sometimes show a DE sort of preview of the map yes. that's about to come. <laughs> well, we did that by copying the map files over. Exactly. Those, those are the ECL <laughs> maps uh, that we put straight into DE and they just worked. Yep. So that was fantastic. Um, obviously, there's, uh, there's a lot of features there. And as you said, there's some more RMS features yeah. as well. That's the thing as well. Like th This is a game that has 20 years of history and 20 years of custom 
uh, content of, mm -hmm. of yeah the community, and you don't just want to throw that away. So yeah, <laughs> right, right. We're I mean, trying to support as much as possible from old mods. Like even if you have scenarios, if you have a scenario from 1999, it will probably still work in the. That's there insane. Yeah. <laughs> um, and actually, while we're on the topic of scenarios, again, as I said before, there is just so much to this game when it comes to custom scenarios. Um, the scenario editor is incredible for a game that is so old. Uh, uh, but are there any upgrades coming with DE to the scenario editor as well? There's some upgrades there as well. Uh, we added a few more uh, triggers as well. Uh, of course, so many more eye candy objects, so you can make a town that's so much prettier. Uh, the terrain blending has uh, improved significantly, uh, but yeah, I won't go too much into detail, but uh, definitely the scenario designers who are a bit more fanatic, they will see it, they will be like, oh, how, how could I ever make scenarios without this before? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I, I, I've made quite a lot of scenarios myself over, uh -huh. over the years, and you know, having those new trigger capabilities is really nice. You, you can do so much creativity inside of the scenario editor. So, you know, giving those tools to the community is great for allowing them to make new things and keep the game going in different ways. Yeah. Awesome. Let's see more questions. Uh, yeah, I mean, th there's a lot. Um, can it support multi-display? That's quite a technical one. I think it can. Yeah. I haven't tried actually, but I'm quite sure it can. I mean, AG supported it, so I'm quite sure that yeah. uh, it will be supported. I mean, I'm sure if well. you plugged your, your driving steering wheel and your pedals in, you could probably hook <laughs> it up and make it work. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, are there any buffs coming to any of the, the weaker sips? Like the Vietnamese, for example, uh, in competitive AOE, they, they, have a terrible, um, they have a terrible win rate and terrible pick rate as well. Um, is there any sort of changes coming to the Vietnamese? Um, so I believe we have uh, some balance changes that are coming in on release. Whoa! Oh, we had, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think there was a little lag there between the players. <laughs> okay, so, so this is actually, this is exactly what happens if you have like a lag spike. Uh -huh. um, instead of punishing all players at all times, at some point the game will just catch up real quick. Okay. And then everybody goes smoothly. Again. Right, so, so I mean, I think in, in uh, another scenario that could have gone out of sync. Exactly. But in this case, it actually just slows down and then you're yeah, back it, up. It catches okay. up again and, yeah. th and then you're all good. Yeah. So that's, it's, it's really weird the first time you see it. Yeah, right. But after some time, you're like, okay, this is actually better than yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're actually, as I said, we're not playing this over LAN right now. So mm -hmm. our connection may have just dipped slightly to the server. And then that's the result of that. But now exactly. we're back on track. So that's awesome. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, sorry, go, going back to the Vietnamese and, and other civs, uh, have they sort of been addressed as well? Uh, so yeah, we have some uh, balance changes coming up. Uh, and we will just keep on doing mouse changes as we sure. So sure. There we go. Uh, would there be a list of those available anywhere for people to to see? Everything will be uh, on the release. We will have a balance change lock ready, so people okay. can look into it. Fantastic. That's what we want to hear. Yeah. Um, AI support for Forest? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I can see T90 still in front of me. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the AI capabilities are, are definitely expanded, uh, but I don't know if our AI is fully capable of doing for us nothing <laughs> natively. <laughs> At least not on, on meta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how would games between Europe and Asia work? If once your uh, service in Europe, surely it would a a lag for the Asian player. Um, wh how does that work? You know, is it sort of choosing the the server with the lowest latency to both players, or uh, the host? Uh, the, sorry, the host chooses the server. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's similar to I, I believe in StarCraft as well. Like you, you pick the server. You pick the you server. Play, yeah. Exactly. You play on that server. Yeah. And anyone not playing on that server is what well, that's on them. Uh, I mean, yeah. It's if the, the the thing about the goodest thing about server is that you can kind of pick the server, and then if you're all close to the server, it runs great. Mm. But you still can't like whatever technology you pick you still have the distance between continents that you can't bridge. Yeah, like of whatever course. multiplayer of course, system yeah, you do. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is your personal favorite change? Like what is your, your you know, your favorite thing, you know, in DE? It could I think be a change or a new feature. I think it's just the farm queue. Like it's okay. a fr I, I just build a mill and I click it on. I, I mm. never ever want to re re-see the farm ever again. <laughs> that's, that's just it. Yeah. That's just it. I mean, it's pretty awful when you've been focused on the other side of the map for, you know, 20 minutes and you come back and everything's just idle. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, just to explain how that works for anyone maybe unfamiliar, uh, in the mill, there is a new button next to the reseed, well, the farm queue. Yeah. And you can toggle it on or off. So you can turn it on or off at any time. And when it's on, uh, farms will automatically take the 60 wood from your bank and reseed. Exactly. And I mean, it's an option. 
you, you can just turn it on. You can still do the, the, the manual queue from uh, before. You can just not use any queue at all. So you can do three okay. options. Yeah, yeah, awesome. That's great. Um, yeah, I mean, it just I feel like this game is very much in the spirit of this, this tournament. Um, <laughs> it's an hour and, and, and 12 minutes in, and uh, they're still going. They're so still going. <laughs> <laughs> like, when will it end? Who knows? Maybe yeah. in three hours, like uh, last <laughs> night. But uh, I'm sure I'm not too worried about today's schedule. I think we're going to be uh, all good today because, um, well, it is a best of nine for the grand finals, but yeah. I do believe uh, we'll be well on schedule, even if this does run a little longer. But uh, yeah, Tato actually really catching up again. He actually uh, was under a lot of pressure from Doubt's rating earlier on, but now it's uh, him who seems to be pushing back and actually starting to take a bit more map control. Yeah. Uh, Dow seems to be sort of making a play through the middle, uh, or sorry, rather on the right-hand side, but uh, Tato is sort of pushing uh, out behind him as well on that right side there, coming into his farms look, and uh, Dow sort of trying to push in the middle, but maybe losing a little bit of steam, sort of pulling back towards his castle there. Um, the Tartar's castle, I mean, and the buildings in general, these like uh, blue globes looking really, really pretty. Yeah, really happy with how the graphics turned out, and, and as we said before, like they're instantly recognizable. So, yeah, new civilization, but you, you're immediately feeling at home yeah. uh, when playing it. Yeah. So, so obviously, we, we see two different uh, architecture styles here, if I'm not mistaken. And yes. uh, the other two sips, then, um, did they fall under the same or categories, or? Uh, so we have two uh, that follow like the blue dome style, yep. and then two with a s new Slavic style. Mm -hmm. So that's actually the updated Slavic style uh, that we see here. Yeah. And uh, just for the chat, what, what are the new SIFs? The other two? Oh, okay. So the, yeah. the other two SIFs, like we have the Lithuanians and the Bulgarians, which follow the Slavic style. And then we have the Kumans and the Tatars, yeah. uh, which follow the new Central Asian style. Cool. Awesome. And uh, more information about those soon. If you're in the beta, I'm sure they'll... Uh, will they be available to play in the beta? Uh, I think we have like a rotation, so... Uh, but yeah. Eventually, there yes. Is, yeah. Eventually, you will get to play all of them. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, can we rotate the camera? I don't believe you can. Uh, rotate? No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, you can, you can <laughs> zoom in and zoom out, yes. but uh, rotation is not... It's still a 2D game. Uh, people often forget, but it's a two-dimensional two game. Yeah. Um, are there going to be any options to sort of hide score during game? I mean, obviously, score has always been sort of present uh, in multiplayer. Is there any way to hide that? Uh, currently not. We thought about it, uh, but actually uh, talked to some pro players, and this seems to be a mixed feeling yeah. about, like, is it actually good for the game? Is it actually not good for the game? It's, it's a trivial feature to add, to be honest, but uh, for release, I don't think it will be there. Yeah, I think it's quite more of a controversial one. I yes. mean, a lot of people are very familiar with that, and I mean, maybe you could argue there's even a little bit of skill in, in reading the score, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, some would argue that, well, it's information that you shouldn't have, and so on and so yeah. forth, so yeah, it's a, sort of a big one to discuss, but Tato making a pretty big push now. He's got a lot of siege rams there in the middle, and uh, they look like they're heading straight towards Doubt's castles. Uh, Doubt actually trying to deal with some siege rams out on the right side as well, and uh, yeah, just trying to keep on top of things. Sending out a group of villagers <laughs> into the corner of the map. I don't know if he's going to try and raid from there. But uh, looking at his, his uh, resources, his eco right now, it's not looking great. He's uh, almost below 100 pop. He's got barely any food in the bank. I mean, I imagine he's got quite a few units in queue. Um, you can actually see the difference here. Dow actually doesn't have the unit queue turned on, mm -hmm. uh, whereas Tato does. So you can see all of Tato's units queued up at the top there, whereas on Dow's screen, uh, that is not visible, but uh, yeah, Tato uh, at 200 pop, looking quite comfortable, taking down those castles uh, in spectacular animations, <laughs> and you are victorious! There we go. Doubt calls GG. it! <laughs> <laughs> well played, Tato. Yep, well played. That was the first official competitive DE game, I think. It was. It was there the first go. ever <laughs> competitive DE match, and uh, that was cool. Uh, we yes. got to see a lot. Obviously, we saw it from the players' perspectives. We tried yeah. to answer the questions, so uh, less about the commentary, more about the getting to know the game. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, that was awesome. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in for that. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see if we can do something again at the end of the stream, and definitely up the frame rate as well, because we can do that. Uh, it's just set for AOE 2. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you so much, Sijin, yes. for, for joining me. Really appreciate it. Um, hopefully we can have you back later. But just you being here, um, the community managers as well for AOE2 being here. Uh, it's great to meet everyone and, and sort of have exactly. a chat and catch up. 